Hi everyone, it's Tuesday evening, it's about 10.30 and it's the 25th of February and I've got a relatively large uh, model railway update because I've been really busy since Sunday. So, in order to show you what I've been up to, I need to turn the camera around because it's right behind you. So, I've also got you on the tripod because I need hands free as well for this. For the most part, anyway. So, as you can see, there's a big board up there now. It's not in my hallway getting in the way anymore, which I'm really pleased of. Um, Saturday, me and my stepdad had to go up to B&Q and he um, bought a pack of the wood that I needed to make the framework, the support and framework. So, Sunday... Um, he came up here Sunday morning, we put the framework on. And we have also fixed it to the bench like I wanted, but we didn't use a batten. Not on top, anyway. He's put the hinges right at the back, so they're right here. With a bit of wood screwed along there for a bit of reinforcement. Uh, where each hinge is. Uh, but other than that, it still folds down like I wanted it to. I haven't put any catches in yet, so it's resting against the wall. Uh, the other thing we did, we pulled this out from the wall, 14 inches. Uh, so that's left me a big enough gap. I'll have to climb over the bed to get down there, but yeah, you can't have everything, can you? Um, so I can now get down the back and work on the back side of the layout without having to try and sort of lean across it all. Um, yesterday I did add these on. So I've got like a bit of a handle because obviously the legs have to fold as well because I didn't want them sticking out into the ceiling. Uh, yeah, not only that, all three legs now move together so when I line it up on the floor to get the table sitting right, I've only got to move the one leg because all three will move together so it just made, made life a lot easier. Uh, that one is slightly on the skew if though, but I might actually unscrew it and straighten that leg up because it's not quite straight. Or it could be that this bit is actually pinging that way for some reason anyway, it should be there. So, to demonstrate, the whole idea was to have the folding base so I could, you know, store it like this out of the way. The only downside to this is I can't leave locomotives on it, obviously, but with that much space behind it, I can actually put buildings and the things on it and make a proper little model. So, the idea is, I'm just going to turn that tub around before I trip over it. You just grab hold of this, you pull it down. Well, obviously I'd have to hold this and do the catches at the same time, which is going to be a problem. That's what I need to figure out. How am I going to do that? Because I'm not tall enough to reach up there. And I don't want to release the catches without holding on to this because it just means it's going to fall straight on my head. So that's the kind of problem I'm having to solve. But yeah, we just do this and that lowers down like that. And it's nice and quiet, so if I'm working late at night on this, I'm not going to disturb the neighbours or anything. So yeah, these legs want to go in just a smidge. What I am thinking of doing is on the ends here where these legs are, one either end is having like a fold out catch just to st stop the risk of these uh, folding under. Right, yeah. There we go. So one eight foot by four foot base to build on. But that's not the only thing I've been up to. <laughs> Uh, we did count the sink these screws quite well, so I haven't got to worry about anything getting caught on those. That was probably the advantage about using MDF, that they count, screws will count the sink in their MDF better than plywood. I found that one out the hard way when I uh, did my model railway, not my model railway, my Lego City in the lounge. So what I'm going to think of doing is actually taking a bunch of screws out which means dismantling parts of the city and uh, countersinking the screws properly. Um, somewhere, I have actually got a countersink bit here, but I have no idea where it is. Anyway, I just want to demonstrate this. 
So of course to fold it up it would be the complete reverse. But I'm actually glad I've got this because it does act like a handle and I can use both arms. Which uh, actually makes lifting this a lot easier than just using one. And, and let me just lean that up against the wall. I can sit there for the time being. So, I've also got this as a workbench. So I'm kind of setting this up. One thing I want is a little bench vice clamp on one, not one that would be screwed here permanently. Um, so when I fold that down, I can just take that off first and put it in one of my storage drawers or under here. Because a lot of the computers that were under here, or at least half of them, are under the bed now. And all the model railway stuff is up on that corner. Um, I've got three computers on the top here, as you can see. <laughs> They're sort of acting as a counterweight, because uh, when me and my stepdad first put this base up there like that, because there was nothing on there, because obviously I had to clear it all to move the bench th um, out from the wall, it tilted. This whole bench tilted backwards, so he put some screws in down there, so this bench is actually screwed to the wall, uh, the skirting board in fact. And this end, because we've got nothing to screw it to, I put three of my computers on there. Um, actually, I think it would be alright. I don't think it's going to tip. In fact, I know it's not because uh, we put this up before I put the computers on when it was just screwed in down in that corner. So, uh, yay. I've got base. <laughs> I can't wait to get building. I can't build it yet or put, at least put the track down yet because I haven't got no track pins. And I haven't got enough of um, what they call fish plates, or track connectors, little metal connectors. I've got some, but not enough. So, hopefully later tonight I'll be able to uh, talk to you properly, you know, so you're not just talking to, or not just looking at your mouth like you were. Anyway, hopefully later tonight I'll be able to order a pack of track pins, so I can pin the track down. Um, Oh yeah, and the connecting plates, all the fish plates. But what I sat doing today is on the bed. I've got a big pile of track. This is all what my stepdad's given me. Actually, there's a couple of the Hornby bits in here. Hornby set track. You can't bend it. But a lot of this, especially these longer lengths, they are Pico Flexi Track. Not cheap to buy this stuff. But very useful because it means you can set the grades of your curves to suit your layout. Whereas with Hornby set track you can't. The curves are set as they are. So that does limit you a bit. I mean I could use the one on the curves at the end there. That wouldn't be a problem. But I think I've got enough track here to do what I want to do anyway. Um, oh the other thing I'm going to order tonight is a track rubber as well. So I can rubble this track down. Hopefully by the weekend have at least a running oval on this board but yeah because this is used stuff that come off my stepdad's old uh, old layout when he um, stripped it all out to start again this is all leftover track that he hasn't used um, some of it had a lot of ballast stuck in there so I had to go through and poke it all out plus I've trimmed up the ends as well with a dremel shouldn't call that Dremel because it's not, is it? Dremel is a brand. A rotary tool, my park side. <laughs> I've been a bit of a dumbass with that rotary tool as well. Not doing something stupid with it, but I bought one when I've already got two and yeah, I forgot I had the other two. Anyway, um, the reason I've trimmed up ends is, well, simply because this is used track and he, because he uses DCC, he soldered all the joints, we soldered all the fish plates to the joints and some of them had wires soldered on, dropper wires. Um, so I wasn't able to put any new fish plates on them without trimming them off anyway. Chances are I'm going to have to cut some of this to length anyway but I thought it'd be a start just to trim them off so... Because I really don't know what I'm going to use. For the, well, you know I could use that for a long straight couldn't I? Or use... A, I would probably only want like two of these, I think, just for a curve. Just do that and then curve them round. I don't want too steep a curve though. But, uh, anyway, yeah, so that is actually ready to use. Like I said, need a track rubber. I might buy a couple so I've got a spare. 
I wouldn't mind trying to get hold of one of those um, wagons that they make with a little track cleaner underneath. So I can send that around now and again and just clean the track. But, uh, a brand new one's not cheap. So I've done that. So the other thing I've been doing is sorting out my storage drawers over there. Now, as I was saying, I bought the um, Lidl's rotary tool a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, with an accessory pack. Well, I knew I had one in that drawer. I knew I had my Woolworths branded rotary tool in there, which wasn't very good, which is why I bought the Lidl's. And it's wireless, you know, it's battery powered. And I have to say, after trimming up all this track, battery's pretty good. <laughs> Um, but what I forgot I had was an actual Dremel rotary tool in there, so I've got three now. And I've actually found out that I've got seven soldering irons in total. Uh, I think there's at least two in the drawer now. I've got one that I like using which is in the lounge. I've got my soldering station with the adjustable temperature. I've got a red one here that I picked up. Which does work, I've just tried it. It's was on there, it's now um, just cooling. And I've got a blue one on the floor that I don't want. I've got a 12 volt one in the kitchen, which I think I'm just gonna get rid of, probably bin it. It's no good. So yeah, I've been um, having a sort out over there, which uh, I'll take you off the tripod and we'll go and have a closer look so I can actually explain what I've been doing. Right. Just had to do a few other things before I got you off the tripod. Anyway, so, so I've got things laid out at the minute. This is going to be the general tool drawer, which is going to go in the top. Power tools are going to go into there. So I've got a couple of spare soldering irons. I've got my spare rotary tools, hot air gun, a large glue gun. I'm going to put my little glue gun in there as well. I've got my parkside rotary tool in here as well. There's a tray of sort of miscellaneous rotary tool bits here, um, which I believe actually came with the other two rotary tools I got because I bought them second hand. A couple of spare packs there, heat shrink, little sort of grinding die things here that I bought ages ago. Uh, glue sticks, solder, uh, suction pumps, super glues, zip ties soldering flux etc all in that drawer and here I've just got my pliers, my wire cutters, my wire strippers and crimping tools files, paint brushes, pencils I'm still adding to this as well but I think I'm going to need to get another one of those so I can break things down a bit. I've got a big tray of cable there that I'm going to go through because some types of wire I find don't solder very well um, so I need to go through that. Anyway. Plenty to get going with. Um, there's something else. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to go into town tomorrow and I'm going to get a, one of them small, cheap-ass little um, multimeters just to use in here so I don't have to keep finding my big one. You know, I don't really need a big, decent one in here for this sort of stuff. A cheap little one will do. Oh dear. That's not good. I hope that hinge isn't breaking. Oh, it seems to be on there very well. Yeah. I don't know. Never mind. If it falls off, I'll just have to move the hinge. Or add an extra hinge. Anyway. There's a couple of other things that I've thought of that I want to get as well. And a few other things that I'm actually going to add to this. But uh, yeah, I do want another one of these. Or something similar to that. Preferably on wheels like this one so I can roll it out of the way if I need to. So when this is up, you know, I can just tuck that over there out of the way. Sure, wheeler fell off. It's lower on that corner. Um, I'll have to have a look around see if I can find one on wheels. 
Now this one will go in the top. That one will go in the middle. So uh, yeah, so I want a bolt-on clamp. I don't think my stepdad's not a bolt-on one, a clamp-on one. I used to have one. But I gave that away to a friend. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to see if I can find one. So when I'm not using it, I can just tuck it under there or in one of the drawers. One of, probably in one of the drawers, actually. Right. I've also thought that I should put my precision screwdriver bits in there as well. So I'm more likely to use them over there. Uh, which are up here. This, but the only problem is I've only got one suitable screwdriver. I don't know where it is at the minute. Uh, it could be buried up here somewhere. I don't know. But I was going to go into um, oh, it's here. I'm just going to go into QDs tomorrow and see if I can get another one of these Rolson branded ones. That was only one ninety nine. Uh, just so that one can stay with my kit, and the other one I'll put with this in the um, tool tray in the other room. Another one for the ones with the painted stripes on because they go in this. I'm sure I've got another one of them yellow ones somewhere as well. Uh, there is actually a couple somehow hiding in here and some screws. Uh, I think those are laptop screws. So that's orange and it's got to go in over there. Ow, they're sharp these bits. That one should be over here as well. Feeling that's a 3.5 one. That's a Phillips, it's got to go over there. So I've actually got a perm star bit missing. That's it. I'm sure I've seen that star bit around here somewhere, so I'm not too worried about it. All of those that are laying in the bottom there, they go in, there it is, <laughs> they go into that, so, yeah, so that's another thing. I could use this one that's in there, but it's actually broken, that's the only tool from Lidl's that broke, and I think that was me being a little bit too heavy-handed with it, you know, it's only designed for light work, and not for the amount of force that I actually put it through, so, um, I don't really want to buy another kit like that just to get another screwdriver bit. I might as well go and spend a couple of quid on one of them Rolson ones because the bits fit. The bits from that little kit I just took through there will fit this. So I'm just going to take these out make sure I've got a good selection of those because I've been finding these dotted everywhere around the flat as well. I think I've got a couple of star bits in here actually. There's a flat blade. That's a star bit. Come here, you bugger. Should have two slightly different sized Phillips bits. I've actually got two different sized star bits there. I've got one Phillips bit. Flat bit, flat bit. I can see they're actually numbered on the side as well. And chucked any on it, and this needs to. I need to take all the loose stuff off and just give that shake off. And there's the other star bit. I knew that was here somewhere, so I'm not taking that into the other room. And anything else laying on there? No, I've got my torch in there. Like a mobile repair kit, this thing. <laughs> a couple of screwdriver bits missing out of there. Alright, well, I'll worry about that later. I'm just going to take this bit into there, and I think, oh, the 
end the video. So, yeah, a big update. So, hopefully by the weekend, or by the end of the weekend, I will have the um, track down on this and then I can actually start placing buildings and doing scenery and whatnot. There is still a bunch of various rolling stock that I want to get, but I'll probably be wanting to get that for years to come, so... <laughs> Yeah. If I get bored with any rolling stock, no doubt I'll sell it on and whatnot. Anywho, I do hope you liked the video. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I will talk to you all again in the next one. Bye.